Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, A&N's Best Sport Planes of 2017 list keeps coming together. Zenith holds Eclipse event at Mexico, Missouri factory. FAA says Santa Monica Airport must remain open until 2023. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's August 23rd and this is Airborne Unlimited. This year's selection of the best sport planes of 2017 remains a pretty intriguing pursuit and much busier than we expected. Previous list assignments established that aircraft by Progressive Aerodyne, the airplane factory at Kid Fox, Vans, and Sonics were early leaders for the list. Others have now qualified, one of the foremost of which is in a CH-750 series, especially with the advent of the enlarged Super Duty airframe and the availability of the outrageously cool unpanel. The Rans S-20 Raven and the soon-to-be-completed S-21 have received huge support, along with solid marks for the older Rans birds, with the tandem seating S-7 series getting particular kudos. However, anticipation for the forthcoming S-21 outbound is considerable. Technam continues to show up more and more as we build a knowledge base on those companies making an impact in the sport flying arena. Our own test flights have come away impressed with the overall handling of each of the birds we've flown, but also with the quality of construction. The bird getting most of the attention right now, though, is the low-wing Technam Astore. The rest of the list is still under consideration and will be unveiled as soon as possible though additional input, comments, and suggestions are always welcome. The total solar eclipse that passed across America Monday was truly a sight to behold, and what better way to witness this historical event than to view it from the air. Zenith aircraft pilot Roger Dubert went flying in the new Zenith STOL CH-750 Super Duty to experience the total solar eclipse that passed over the Zenith Aircraft Factory in Mexico, Missouri at 1313 Monday. Zenith Aircraft President Sebastian Heinz went flying in the low-wing Zenith CH-650 with his son Freddie for great views of totality, as seen through the gorgeous bubble canopy of the CH-650 cruiser. Despite an obscured view of the sun and moon at the factory during the total eclipse, staff and visitors had a great day for the unique event. Meanwhile, the Zenith Factory will hold its 25th anniversary open hangar days and fly-in September 22nd through 23rd at the factory in Mexico, Missouri. After the break, Santa Monica Airport must stay open until 2023. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. The FAA has rejected an appeal by Santa Monica city leaders to push out the closing date of Santa Monica Airport citing AIP grants the city accepted back in 2003. The ruling came from Eduardo A. Angeles, the FAA's Associate Administrator for Airports. He upheld the decision made by Byron K. Huffman, Acting Director of the Agency's Office of Airport Compliance. Huffman said that the city accepted an AIP grant of $240,600 in August of 2003, and grant terms normally expire 20 years after they are accepted. That would put the earliest possible closing date of KSMO at August 2023. The ruling came in response to a complaint filed by airport tenants and many national aviation groups fighting to keep the airport open. 
Angeli said that Huffman's decision was backed up by a preponderance of evidence that is consistent with FAA policy, court precedent, and federal law. City officials contend that the 2003 grant was merely an amendment of a $1.6 million grant received in June of 1994, which would mean that all federal obligations were met in 2014. The FAA disagrees. City officials must now decide whether to move the matter to federal court, having reportedly exhausted the FAA's administrative review process. With some 3,000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, sometimes it can be fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the flyers we met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. This is a natural evolution of our uh, being in the lithium-ion battery business. Obviously, you want to get them flying on aircraft. or Business is growing for True Blue Power, and while at NBAA 2016, ANN met with Rick Slater, the director of True Blue Power, a division of Mid-Continent Instrument Company. Search True Blue Power, a natural evolution for lithium-ion on Aero TV's news channel. After these messages, NASA prepares for sonic boom tests. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida is partnering with the agency's Armstrong Flight Research Center in California, Langley Research Center in Virginia, and Space Florida for a series of flights to conduct sonic boom research under NASA's commercial supersonic technology project. NASA's supersonic research, spanning decades, is leading toward quieting the sonic boom to more of a quiet thump. Signature flight support will provide preferred pricing on fuel and services at all FBO locations to the commemorative Air Force. Volunteer pilots and air crews can relax and refresh during tech stops as they travel the country performing and exhibiting at air shows. Some of the pricing and services include a nationwide Avgas fuel program, ground support, and assistance with AOG and MRO services as needed via its signature Technic Air Send Division. Boeing employees and community members have commemorated the 90,000 square foot expansion of Boeing Helena to support a 777X airplane production. Boeing Helena is set to install new machine tools to fabricate critical titanium parts for the 777X. A critical component of Lockheed Martin's tactical mission system for the U.S. Air Force Combat Rescue Helicopter, the AN-APR-52 Radar Warning Receiver, recently achieved a Technical Readiness Level 6 assessment following a successful demonstration at the U.S. Air Force Integrated Demonstrations and Applications Laboratory at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio. Atlantic Aviation has entered into an agreement to purchase the assets of Orion Jet Center at Miami Opelika Executive Airport. The acquisition increases the Atlantic Aviation Network of fixed-based operations to 71 locations throughout the U.S. Terms of the transaction were not disclosed. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The first Airbus A320 aircraft to be produced at Airbus U.S. Manufacturing Facility in Mobile, Alabama has flown for the first time. The A320 took off from the Mobile Aeroplex at Brooklyn for a flight lasting approximately four hours, during which tests were performed on systems, engines, and structural performance. The Airbus U.S. Manufacturing Facility can produce three members of the A320 family, the A319, A320, and A321. Thus far, 36 aircraft delivered since operations began in 2015 have been A321s. 
making today's flight another milestone for the U.S.-based production facility. The A320 entered airline service in April 1988, typically seating 150 passengers in two classes, or up to 180 in a high-density layout for charter and low-cost operations. The A320 is in widespread service around the world, flying routes ranging from short commuter sectors to coast-to-coast -to -coast U.S. flights. The A320 family boasts 13,241 orders and 7,696 aircraft delivered to 297 customers worldwide. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. See you tomorrow.